Hey what's going on guys welcome back to the channel in today's video we are going to be creating a grungy looking title animation in HitFilm Express. We won't be using any kind of add-on or plugin uh, so yeah it will be quite a long tutorial so yeah sit back relax and enjoy the video. Okay let's start by creating a new composite shot and let's call this text for the duration let's go with 10 seconds and click on ok let's create a new text layer and we are going to type in our text I'm going to type in grunge the font that I'm using is D-Day Stencil it's free font you can find it on thefont.com and I have also changed the color and make it yellow click on ok and then we are going to select the selection tool make sure it's selected so that you get this bounding box go to layout and align this in the center all right now let's create a new composite shot and call it main click on ok let's drag in our background texture right click make composite shot and we can call it pg texture comp let's close out of this let's close out of the text comp as well and in the main comp on this layer we are going to apply some effects the first one will be curves and uh, we just want to make it a little bit darker because the overall animation is dark so we're just going to select this point and just drag it to the right like that and then we are going to apply tint effect which will make it look desaturated just make sure that the amount to tint is set to 100% and also we are going to reduce the opacity to around 80% okay so uh, we can see some transparency behind so let's create a new plane layer I'm gonna call it solid let's give it a white color and click on ok and bring it below this layer now you will have something like this so far so good now the next thing we're going to do is apply a new grade layer and we just call it vignette and in the effects we're going to search for the same effect vignette apply it on this layer and we're just going to maybe let's just change the horizontal stretch and the vertical stretch and let's just reduce the strength just make it look something like this it's looking good okay so the next thing is we're going to go back to our media panel and drag in our smoke overlay link will be in the description right click on it and go to transform and click on fit to frame and that should be it and you can also right click on it and go to speed slash duration and set this to 10 seconds so that it matches with this composite shot Okay, let's bring in the text comp put it at the top and we are just going to go to controls and change the blend to overlay and you can see the texture through your text texture of your bg texture comp you can see it through this text and that's why we need to change it to overlay and we are going to go back to our text comp for a moment and i'm just going to I'm just going to put some spacing in between these letters maybe like something like this so if you just put some spacing between and uh, it will just make your text look a bit nicer and that's all okay so go to transform and maybe we can reduce the size or the scale to 80 or maybe 90 we can duplicate this Control d to duplicate now if we zoom in we can see our text is kind of it has some texture but we will add some more so we'll just go to effects and do a heat distortion apply it on your text to comp oops apply it the first thing we want to change is the scale we're going to set this to 11 no oh, actually yeah we're going to set this to 11 and the distortion to 200 make sure that the diffusion and the strength is set to zero 
we're just going to duplicate this and we are going to change the scale to 25 and distortion to 40. So if we take a look at this now, so if we take this off, this is before and this is after. So you can see that we just added a bit more texture in our title over here. Now we are just going to duplicate this one more time. Control D to duplicate and we are going to change the opacity to 30% and we're going to go to effects and we can take off the heat distortion from here. I mean we can just delete it right click and click on remove or you can just keep it it's completely up to you i'm just going to remove it okay now we are going to create a new composite shot and we're going to call this strip this is for that paint dripping effect that you saw in the preview for the width we're going to go with 300 and height to 1080 and click on ok let's create a new plane layer and uh, i have given it this same yellow color as our text click on ok uh, let's call this strip and click on OK. Double click on, oh, wait a minute. Let's just change this to rectangle mask first. I'm going to double click on this icon, rectangle mask, and it will create a mask around your composition. And then we're just going to expand it, go to transform, and we are going to unlink the scale and just reduce the width. So something around, maybe let's, let's do 10 or maybe 8. Alright, so let's select our selection tool, which is at the top over here. And then we are just going to be able to see the anchor point. So right now our anchor point is right in the center. You can see this icon over here. It's in the center of the shape. We want this anchor point to be at the top. So we are going to hold the shift key and just drag it to the top over here. And we can just zoom in and just be precise with the positioning. Alright, so once you have that, then we can animate the scale. So I'm going to create a keyframe on the scale at the very first frame. Set that to zero. Go to the end and set this to maybe around 90, 90%. So we have an animation like this. Then I'm going to select this layer again, the drip layer, and we are going to create another shape. So I'm going to select click and hold on this rectangle mask icon and from this list I'm going to select ellipse mask just zoom in and try to put cursor in the middle and just hold the option key and just drag out and create your droplet shape something like this and you can just position it over here or maybe over here so if you zoom out you can see the droplet and you can just you know go back if you think that it's looking weird you can just use the freehand mask tool which is the last icon and you can just distort it like so I think that looks fine now what we want to do is just animate the positioning of our second mask as well so I'll just go to the very first frame create a keyframe on position with the selection tool I'm just going to move it up away from the scene make sure the position on the x is zero go to the end and just bring it down so somewhere over here all right so let's see if they are coming down at the same speed or at the with the same positioning no it is not go to the very first frame and just move it up a little more And now, oh, it's still not there. Okay, so I'm going to put it somewhere over here. And just play this. And you can see that it's going to fall along with the other shape. Alright, so now we're going to apply some effects. So let's apply the heat distortion to this layer. Go to controls and under heat distortion, set the scale amount to 6. Set the distortion to 90 and then we are also going to change the diffusion bias to 33 and strength to 0 and also go to the animation and make sure that the wind speed and noise speed is set to 0 okay so after this we are going to apply blur just a normal blur effect 
just apply it on this layer and set the radius to one pixel all right so then we can just go back to our main comp and we can just position this strip so let's just drag and drop it there is our drip and we just want to scale it down because that is too massive so let's just scale that down and place it anywhere that you want to place it on any letter that you want okay so after you position it properly then you can apply a waves effect on your drip right now you can see that the drip is falling in a straight path and i want some kind of some kind of a movement in the strip so i can just change some settings on the waves uh, i can make it make the amplitude 11 and frequency to 2 and we can also change the angle set this to 180 so yeah just play with the different settings over here so for example the angle over here okay so that looks good and i'm going to duplicate this Control d and i'm just going to move it to any other letter so for example on this one maybe on this side and we can change some settings on this so for example we can go to effects and change the look of this so let's just randomize this by changing the angle and some other settings and you can duplicate it a few more times so let's just duplicate it and put it over here and you can just you know actually make it smaller let's make this around 9 and just put this over here go to effects and change the angle and the displace angle and let's do it one more time let's position it over here okay and i'm just going to change the size make it 12 and just randomize the angle and the displace angle okay so if we take a look at it noise is getting animated so let's just go back to our text comp over here on which we apply the heat distortion and we just need to make sure that the animation under animation the wind speed and noise speed is set to zero this is the crucial step that i forgot and just make sure you do that so just make sure that the wind speed and noise speed is set to zero okay now it will look much better so right now the drips are falling at the same time so i can select any of these composite shots and just move it forward in time to make them come at random intervals now after the trip we are going to add our particles overlay the link will be in the description i'm going to right click on it and go to speed duration set this to 10 seconds right click on it and set the blending mode to add all right so we have our particles as well and then after the particles we are going to apply a new grade layer and uh, let's call this uh, let's just call it a grade layer and on this grade layer we are going to apply few effects the first one will be blur apply it on the grade layer and in the blur we are going to set it to very small amount so 0 0.20 and then we are going to apply another effect called sharpen we apply the sharpen effect you can see that it will bring more of that texture in your animation so for the strength i'm going to go with 75 okay so the next one is going to be grain g-r-a-i-n and apply it on this layer for the amount we're going to go with eight and that should be it the next effect there is one more actually there are two more effects so we are going to apply shake kind of a camera shake effect let's apply that and for the shake we're going to set the amount to 20 and the speed to 0 0.20 and we are also going to make sure we go to motion blur and set that to off the final one will be vignette let's apply it 
change these settings so this is before and this is after so let's just increase or maybe decrease the vertical and horizontal stretch let's maybe reduce the strength a bit and just get the look that you want okay. yeah i think that looks good let me just reduce the quality over here yeah, that looks that looks absolutely fine now you can further enhance all of this by selecting all of these layers and turn these into 3d and click on yes to add a camera let's create a new point layer and we can call it cam control let's parent our new camera to that layer and also make this cam control layer 3d now we can just go to transform and we can create any sort of camera angle so we can just let me just rotate this a little bit like that and we can just zoom in oh let's just zoom in first and then we can just rotate it that will be much easier so let's just rotate and change the position as well rotate on the y change the position keep changing keep playing around with different values over here uh, we can also turn off the floor plane if that's bothering you turn that off and let's just zoom back a little bit and yeah from here you can create your animation position animation or rotation whatever you want to create let's just change the position and also a little bit of rotation let's just bring it over here and a little bit over here reposition your camera uh, yeah that looks pretty cool you can finally go to the new camera and enable depth of field which will really enhance your animation uh, once you turn that on then you can just increase the aperture size and also the change the focus distance and you can focus on the objects or the parts that are nearer to the camera and blur rest of the things so this will take trial and error and you can just go to your new camera and create a keyframe on aperture and focus distance and go forward and you can see that your text will go out of focus and this is the place you need to create uh, extra keyframes so let's just change the focus distance make sure that our text is back in focus so if we take a look at this we need to render this out but i'm going to play this in one fourth quality yeah so you can see that it looks really nice and with some sound effects you can come up with a really cool uh, intro for your videos or maybe your next movie i don't know so yeah that is pretty much it for this video guys i hope this was helpful it took a lot of time and effort to create this video please uh, like the video and also subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the next one